All right, we got through the basics. Now we can start doing a lot more of the funner stuff. Uh, if we wanted to start sculpting on a sphere, there's a couple different ways we can do that. We can go into the simple brush here. We can grab a sphere 3D primitive, drag it out on our canvas. And of course you can initialize this however you'd like, but I'm just gonna go into edit mode here and then hit make poly mesh 3D. Now we have a sculptable surface. When we click on it, it'll actually interact with our object. And of course we can turn poly frame on and off by clicking the button or hitting shift F. Another option you can do is you can hit the comma key to bring your light box up. And in your projects here, you're going to see we have Dynamesh spheres. Dynamesh we're going to get into in just a minute. There's a Polysphere Z project, and you can even go in here to your tools. And if you wanted to say sculpt on a dog, you can double click that and load that up. And there's a Polysphere Z tool in here as well. But what I'm going to do is hide this, and we'll just go ahead and start sculpting on this object. Now, if you've watched the earlier videos in here, you know we have a docking station over here. We can double click this little divider tab and we have our brush menu right here. We can just grab this white circle here and just load this up. So we're gonna talk about brush basics. So over here on the right-hand side, we have a tool and we have a tool palette, which has our last few things that we've picked and our 3D meshes and our 2.5D brushes. The exact same thing on the brush side, if you go into the brush menu here, which we have docked, you're gonna see there's a big square and a lot of little squares. These little squares are just brushes that are hanging out. If you've selected brushes, like if we change this from a standard brushes by clicking in here and we say change it to clay buildup. Now clay buildup is going to be active just like when we had an active subtool when we had when we were switching back and forth, we have an active brush which is in the larger area. And if we click on the large square, that's going to be our brush palette. If we click on the large square in the tool, that's going to be our tool palette. And same things for textures and alphas and materials when we get there. However, for our brushes, we uh, switch from clay buildup and we click that again. You're going to see our standard brushes and our quick picks, or if you go down here, you're going to see we can click the standard brush right here. Uh, you can either click in the brush palette here, or if you don't have that loaded, you can just click in here on this. Essentially, it's the same button, the big square brush palette, and just choose your brushes in here. But just to keep it simple, I'm going to go into my brush palette, I'm going to click standard, and I'm going to brush on my object. So let's talk about base ZBrush brush functionality. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, dock our brush menu here so we can play around with some settings. So most ZBrush brushes, and there's caveats to this, but for most of the sculpting brushes, the organic sculpting brushes here, if you brush on your object, that is by you know either taking your mouse, and I would suggest getting a tablet. Uh, you're going to need a tablet with pressure sensitivity to do decent organic sculpting within ZBrush. But if you just click and drag on your object here, you're going to see it's just going to pull up away from or sculpt out from your object here. If you hold down the Alt key, you're going to see a little minus sign pops up next to your cursor here. So you can hold down Alt, and that'll push in. Now some of the objects are flipped, where if you, you just use the brush as normal, it'll sculpt in if you use the brush. Like if we, uh, in fact, if we go in here, and we choose the Dam standard, the Damien standard here, and you start sculpting, you're going to see it pushes in by default, and then if you hold down Alt, it pulls up. That default behavior is uh, controlled over here. You're going to see the default action is Z sub. If we switch back to our standard brush, the default action is Z add. For the most part, when you're using brushes, it's going to pull away from the surface normals. And if you hold down Alt, it's going to push in. If we switch from the standard brush to the clay brush, you're going to see the same action. Now, this one behaves a little bit differently. You can see the standard brush is a little bit more self-contained. The clay brush is a little bit broader. So you can sculpt out, and you can hold down Alt, and you can sculpt in. And if you want to, you can switch between them. And you're going to see as we're using these brushes, they're starting to show up in our brush, brush palette area here. So if you don't want to go back into your brushes, you can go here's clay brush. You can click standard, and then you're back to your standard brush. And you can go back and you can click clay, and then you're back to using clay. Another way to access your brushes is by hitting the B key in your keyboard. B is in boy. And you can see wherever I do that, it's going to show up basically wherever my cursor is. And if I know I want to use the standard brush, for instance, I can hit S. And that's going to narrow it down to all the brushes that start with the letter S. And at that point, you can go down here and click it. Or if you look right here, you're going to see there's a orange T next to it. So if I hit T, that's going to select the standard brush. Let's say I want to select the clay brush. I can hit B, C, narrow it down to my clay brush or my C brushes. And you're going to see clay is L. So you can hit L. So for example, one brush I use all the time is Z Modeler. Uh, I have that assigned to a hotkey, which we'll get into later. But you can also grab that one by hitting B, Z, and then the M key, and now you have the Z modeler brush. If we want to go back to the standard brush, it's B, S, T. So in a pinch, if you don't want to assign a hotkey, then you also don't want to dig through the brush menu, you can just memorize those key combinations. So looking at some more options up here, we've already talked about Z add and Z sub. Basically, Z add is when you uh, use your brush and it 
pulls away from the surface, then you hold down Alt, and that is, essentially does a Z sub, or a Z subtract. MRGB, RGB, and M we're going to skip for now. Basically, that's when we go to poly paint, we can paint on the vertex colors, and we can also paint materials on our vert vertices. But we'll get to that later. Your Z intensity here, if you crank that up, and you're going to see if we hover over this, the Z intensity, we can hold that control, that gives us even more information. And you're going to see the hotkey for that is U. So if you crank this up like really high, you're going to see the Z intensity goes to 76. And now when we use our standard brush, it really wants to pull away from that surface. And because I'm using a tablet, I can go soft to hard or thin to thick and vice versa. If I hold down alt and then push in, I can do that. Uh, if we want to go back to our original sphere, remember we have this undo slider here. I'm just going to pull that all the way back here. Kind of clean our surface off. Looks like I've got a few more of these options. So we also have focal shift and draw size. Draw size is pretty self-explanatory, just like Z intensity. If you make it more intense, it pulls out further. And if it ever tells you, hey, you've, you're going to remove 25 undo history if you just do a lot of undos, I'll go ahead and hit OK. And so you can see the Z intensity is very high. If I drop that down to a low, now even if I push really hard, it doesn't really deform my object that much. So the Z intensity is pretty self-explanatory. I'll undo that, Control Z. And draw size is the same. So if I put the Z intensity back up to like 36, I can take my draw size here. And if I crank it up, you're going to see that draw size gets very large. So now I'm going to manipulate more of my surface. And if I make my draw size very small, you're going to see I can manipulate a lot smaller areas of my surface. So obviously, uh, if you're making your, you know, I, I do this just offhand automatically. Uh, the hotkey for this, if you hover over draw size, you can see the hotkey for that is S. I, I'm constantly tapping that. So I do S for my draw size and it's wherever your brush is, your draw size menu will pop up. Same thing for focal shift is O. So if you want to change that, you can hit O. Same thing for Z intensity is U, you can hit U. As an alternative to that, you can also hold down your space bar and you can change your draw size right here, your focal shift right here, and your Z intensity right here. So you can very quickly have access to a lot of options within ZBrush very, very quickly. And then you can let go of spacebar to get rid of that menu. So we've talked about Z intensity. We've, we can change how intense it is. We've talked about draw size. We can make our brush size bigger or smaller, so we can manipulate more or less. We can do detail work with a smaller brush. We can do big changes with a larger brush. And focal shift, this very last one here, this will come more into play when we start talking about masking, but it also works with our brushes. It's kind of a fall off for your brush. So you can think of, if I hit tap O, you're going to see when I change my focal shift to the left to a negative, you see how that middle section kind of goes out to the edge. That means there's less of a fall off between how, where the brush is going to affect my surface and where the edge or the maximum area that that brush is going to affect. And then if I bring that in, you're going to see there's a much bigger distance between that middle circle and the maximum area of that brush. So if you play around with these, if we make those very close together, you're going to see, I'm making my draw size a little bit bigger. So there's standard brush selected. You're going to see while using our standard brush, our brush is going to behave like this because essentially our standard brush is pulling out from the surface and then the middle part of that brush is really close to the outer part. So there's not a whole lot of fall off happening. If we reverse that and we tap O or go up here to the focal shift and we just change that from like negative 80 to like positive 60, we can go and you're going to see there's a very, very large fall off between where the standard brush is going to affect our surface and where the maximum, just maximum edge of that brush is. Generally speaking, for most of the brushes, you probably want to keep this at the default value. I think the default value for standard brush is probably zero. But when we get into more specialized brushes later on, you can see how that we may have to change that, especially when we get into masking. So go ahead and take our undo slider all the way back. And there's one more brush I want to talk about. We've talked about the standard brush, and we've talked about the clay brush. And I've got hotkeys assigned to those. I've got Alt S assigned to standard and Alt C assigned to clay brush. Uh, skip forward to the hotkeys and custom interface video if you want more information on that. But or you can also go through here and just select these for now. So let's say I want to use my standard brush to kind of build up a surface area, and then I'll hold down Alt to kind of to kind of build in. But what if I want to smooth the, tr the transition between where we've built out and then where we pushed in? If you hold down Shift, you're going to see my cursor turns blue. And now, and also when I hold down Shift, you're going to see my brush changes from a standard brush or whatever brush I have selected to the smooth brush. And you're also going to see, when I hold down Shift, these options up here change. So if you ever want to make changes to your smooth brush properties, you're always going to want to make sure you hold down Shift and then change the things up here. 
For example, if I hold down shift and then start smoothing, you're going to see it's going to smooth my object down. If I undo that, it's going to come back. And now if I hold down shift, you're going to see my Z intensity is at 100. So I'm going to hold down shift and then drag this Z intensity very low. And now when I hold down shift on my object, you're going to see it barely affects my object. So if I want to change any properties in my smooth brush, I got to hold down shift, change my Z intensity, or I can turn off RGB if I want to not smooth my poly paint, for example, which we'll get to in a bit. But now I can smooth with a Z intensity of 100, and now we're going to smooth this out. So between these brushes, say our standard brush here, we've got kind of a mouth going. Let's go ahead and uh, navigate around. We've talked about a navigation here. So we've got kind of a sad mouth here. We're going to hold down Alt. We'll punch in some eyes, and then we'll sculpt a brow here. So we're just going to hold down Alt to push in. Then we can sculpt out some brows. We can even sculpt out a little bit of a nose here. We can see you hold down Shift to kind of smooth and soften these transitions down. And those are the basic organic brushes here. And again, if you want to switch to the clay brush, you can go over here and tap the clay brush or go in here and hit uh, or hit B, C, L. And now you can use your clay brush and you can see, and it, we'll get more into this when we get into organic sculpting, but you can see how this brush behaves a little bit different to the surface. So this one I like to use to kind of build up forms. I give them some cheekbones here and then smooth this down. So you can very quickly start sculpting out kind of a basic face. And always remember, you can hold down Alt and kind of push in so you can get the clay brush to kind of push in and hold down shift to smooth so you can start defining your forms and your plane changes and all that good stuff with these very very simple default Z brushes. Now one addendum I do want to make is if you're sculpting on an object say on the nose so you're sculpting on the nose and then as you rotate it's going to rotate right around that last point you touch which is really useful when you're sculpting so if I want to sculpt on the foot it'll rotate around the foot so if I'm in here and I'm doing very very precise work on these toes here it's just going to rotate around the toes and then of course if, as I rotate around I can kind of stay in this area now if I zoom out and it's like okay I want to sculpt on this nose now I'll go through here and it'll just rotate around the nose so super useful while you're sculpting that's default behavior if you go in here to transform you're gonna see there's a local button checked on by default now, I'm not certain if you would ever want to turn this off, but if you do, you can turn off local, and now it's just going to rotate around the world axis. So if you uh, are over here sculpting on the nose, and you start rotating, it's going to rotate from the common axis. So if for any reason you don't want it to rotate around your local axis, that's where that is, is underneath transform and local. So let's go in here and grab a plain 3D, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. There's one more brush I want to talk about. Well, brush setting I want to talk about. So we have our brush settings over here. Go down here to elasticity and at the very bottom you're going to see there's a simulation iterations. So any brush in ZBrush, you're going to see there's already cloth brushes. So B, C, cloth twister for example. You can go through here and you can pull this around and it's going to simulate your geometry as you use it. Now we're getting heavier into the dynamics menu later. But just for now, just so you are aware of it, you can go through here and you can cause any brush in ZBrush to use simulation and use these settings. And all that is, is just using the simulation iterations. You're gonna see Cloth Twister is set to 100. If you go B, C, K for Cloth Hook, you know, that has simulation iterations up to 100. However, if you go into like B, S, A for, uh, for the spiral brush, simulation iterations is at zero. So if you use this, it'll spin your geometry, no problem. Uh, but it's not going to simulate the geometry. It's not going to treat it, uh, these relationships between these edges as something that needs to maintain its surface area or anything like that. However, if I go over here and crank this up to 100, now when I do this, you're going to see the cloth is going to start reacting and trying to maintain, again, these surface area relationships. So you can now go through here and use this cloth or use the spiral brush to actually be a cloth brush. And the other thing too is if you want to drop this down, this is essentially telling it, hey, in the dynamics menu, run 100 simulation iterations per movement. But down here in the brush settings, we're saying, hey, only run 41 or 40 or 20 or 14 per movement. So this is going to allow you uh, a little less cloth control, but a little more sculpting control. So if you want the simulation or you want the algorithm to take over and make a lot of decisions for you, keep this up at 100. If you want a little more control over what the brush is doing, then you can, you know, drop that simulation iterations down a bit and it'll err a little more on the side of maybe not maintaining cloth relationships, but allowing you uh, to sculpt a little bit more uh, in control.